What's up? Welcome back to another video. Today, we shall discuss Chori's kit and her overall meta value for different types of player. Same disclaimer if you like her, pull her. This video will be more relevant for meta players, helping you to better understand her value in the current meta. Also, a lot of information, especially her stats, scaling, and numbers are not announced. But this will not affect her meta value as we will still be able to know her overall value based on her kit. A lot of you are not subscribed to the channel, so if you like my content, please consider subscribe, this will help me a lot. I also made a video about the general pool value of other rerun characters in 4.5. Go watch that if you want to know more on that. Alright, if you remember a video I made more than a month ago on my speculations on Chiori and her kid, well, it's safe to say that my speculation was only half accurate. The version that I was more inclined to believe to be the direction Hoivers will take to design Shuri's kit was her being made into a dedicated support for Navia using the elemental shards mechanics. And I also talk about another direction that they can take to design her kit, and that is making her into a sub DPS or DPS that will work well with Navia. It is only half accurate because Shuri ended up becoming a dual sub DPS but not for Navia, as zero that is. And the reason why my speculation was accurate was because that I was too fixate with the idea of synergy with Navia. But in the end, she is not originally made to be an absolute pair for her. Why did they took that direction though, you may ask? My speculation is that because of the sales of Navia was not as high as they expected it to be, and they want to make sure Chori is not just a dedicated support for an unpopular DPS, because it will definitely cause Chori's sales to be bad. But that's just my guess though. Now let's finally talk about her kit. Cherry is a pure off field dual sub DPS. She has no damage with buffing skill, and the damage is scaled with both defense and attack, with defense being more valuable, about 6 to 4 ratio. Her skill upon using will summon a door that do single target dual damage to enemy. Imagine it as Radiant skill but with more damage. And if there is a dual construct present on the field, she will summon another door. This can happen both before or after using her skill. However, I do recommend summoning it after her skill, for the construct might get destroyed before you use her skill. And also, summoning after her skill will generate slightly more energy, but it's quite near that it almost don't matter. To casual player that is. So 2 doors will of course deal double damage, and they can only have 2 doors on a few, with duration of each door being independent. What is a geo construct you may ask? Zhonglis, Pillar, Ito's Ushi, Ningguang's Jet Screen, etc. These are all geo construct. Not that her own though does not count as Geo Construct itself. And that is her skill. And her burst is pretty much not important. Just know that it is an AoE attack, and this AoE damage is low when compared to her dose damage. Chiori is a pure off field sub DPS, so her normal attack is not important as well, unless you are going for C6. And yeah, that's pretty much it. The only thing about her kit that matters is her skill. Now let's talk about her meta value versus other character. Like I mentioned in previous video, for her to be a wolf pulling unit for meta slaves, she needs to be at least on par or better than Furina and her constellation. So is she better than Furina as a sum DPS? You just need to know one thing, she is literally a better Albedo, Albedo 2.0. What Albedo can do, she do it better, and in general, has better constellation value. Her skill has higher damage than Albedo's, almost double the damage that Albedo can do with his skill, and she does not gel her team within a circle too. If you own Albedo, you also know how annoying and fragile Albedo's flower is, and Jory have none of those issues. Albedo burst does give EM buff, but in a duo team itself, and in most teams that include Albedo, EM is almost useless anyway. Jory's door enemy detecting radius is wider than Albedo's flower, but the door itself has a smaller attack radius than Albedo's flower, which can cause Jory to be less efficient against AoE content. But that does not really matter anyway, because she still deals higher damage than Albedo. Her only issue is she has to be paired with a Jory teammate that read a Jory construct at C0. Even at C6, she only released her restriction with Jory construct, and still needs to be paired with a Jory character. And that signals that she is not as fulfilling as Farina and a constellation, and now I will explain how is that so. Chiori as a better version of Albedo can replace him in almost any team that he was once good in. After replacing Chiori with Albedo in Ito team, we can see a huge damage increase in team damage and sub DPS damage. It's more than 50% more of your damage on paper. For dedicated Ito mains, I personally think you should get her C0 to replace your Albedo in the team, as the increase in damage is too significant to be missed out on. Plus, she can generate energy for the team more stable than Albedo. Technically speaking, her off-field damage is on par with Farina when she is played ultimately in certain teams. At investment on C0R1, replacing Albedo in Ito team, she can deal about 30% more damage than Farina on paper. 
However, this is just the damage of Jory versus Farina in the team, as in the off-field damage only. Because Ito is a power crab DPS, the overall team damage of Nuvile plus Farina team is still way higher than Ito plus Jory. Not to mention the gameplay and utility. Don't forget that Nuvile and Farina are the best DPS and buff support in the game right now. So Meta slaves, don't have to worry about Shuri at all. You can just skip her and save for C2 Verena or Nuvilet instead. She also cannot be used in Nuvilet team because she needs to be paired with another Joe character, which will ultimately make either your Nuvilet deal less damage due to less reaction or your Shuri deals less damage due to lack of one additional door. So she is an easy skip for Meta slaves or players who invested in Nuvilet Verena Meta. Now the most important question that y'all probably have is her synergy with Navia. And this is what hurt me the most. This is what pushed me to pull on Shen Yun's and Yai's banner. At C0, her damage is too low to be worth pulling for to be put into Navia's team. Because Navia herself does not create Geo Construct and she needs two teammates of different elements to trigger her passives. Bringing Zhongli into this team plus Chiori and Navia, you get no elemental shards for your Navia. If you cannot ban it for Fisio or other sub DPS, your Navia will do so much less damage due to the lack of attack buffs from Bennett. Using Furina also needs a healer unless you have her C6. TLDR, Chiori's synergy with Navia at C0 is horrible, and to solve this issue, you need her C1. C1 Chiori is almost the bare minimum for her to enter Navia's team. It releases the restriction of Geo Construct, and Navia herself is a Geo character, which is still needed to summon a second door. But this constellation does not add any damage. And what's worse, C1 Chiori is absolutely unnecessary for the rest of the team comp. Do not get the idea wrong, C0 Chiori is a complete unit, but you need C1 Chiori to make her work in Navia's team. In short, her C1 is only there as a bait for Navia main. And should you fall for this bait, I will let you decide on your own. But to me personally, it's not worth it. I would rather have C2 Farina, which would ultimately increase my Navia's damage too, and is more useful than Chiori's C1. So does that mean Shiori is absolutely useless? No, she is not. If you really like her, you can pull for her and pair her with Zhongli and plug them in any team. Like back then when Yelan wasn't released, Zhongli, Obedong and Xingqiu being the best teammates for Hu Tao. And it is the same concept here for Zhongli plus Shiori. The damage she can output is higher than Yelan in Hu Tao team. However, this gameplay is only good because Shiori can deal good damage. She has zero buff utility, so she will most likely get power creep very soon by newer DPS and sub DPS. So if you want her, you should pull her now. Her meta value will likely drop as soon as she gets a rerun because damage is one of the least valuable things in this game. All Hoyovers needs to do is release another sub DPS character with higher scaling and damage to power creep Shiori. Just like how Nahida, Yelan, and Chori herself power crap Abedo. Not to mention, Chori as a Geo character already has a lot of other disadvantages herself. These are some of the possible teams where you can plunk the door in, and there could be more out there as well. Alright, if you made it this far, you probably are gonna pull for her, so let's talk about how you should build her. Most of her damage will be from her skills, so you pretty much can only use either Golden Troop or the Hus. With Golden Troop generally, be a better option. Well, I suppose everyone has more Golden Troop anyway, because it's more efficient to farm that domain. Golden Troop is like 5% better than the Hus, unless you play Chiori on view or with Furina. I would say just use any that has better stats. 2 piece 2 piece is viable but not recommended, as it can be like 15-20% to worse than Golden Troop or Hus on paper. As for her weapon choice, her signature is very good on her, like 20% better than the free to play options. Then followed by Furina's signature weapon, if paired with Furina to fully utilize the passive. But honestly, why would you give her Farina's weapon when Farina is in the team? So it is not recommended to use it. Jet Cutter is the real second best in slot, followed by R5 Wu Fang from the past, and then Light of for their incision and Miss Peter. There are not a lot of free-to-play options for her. Her best free-to-play option is actually Harbinger of Dawn. You don't even have to worry if you had missed out on Cinnabar Spinder or Festering Desire because R5 Cinnabar Spinder is only okay on her. For that had purposely made Shuri to not be able to utilize the stats and passive of the weapon fully, which ended up making Harbinger of Dawn, a 3-star weapon, be better than it. Also note that Harbinger of Dawn is only good if you don't plan to play her with Reina. If playing with Reina, then Cinnabar can be better. And the rest are pretty much unusable like Festering Desire, Farfunia's Sword, the Pipe. They all provide ER utility rather than damage, so they are unrecommendable. As for Talon Priority, since her skill is major part of her damage, prioritize leveling her skill first, then her burst. You can ignore normal attacks unless you are planning to C6 her, or you really want to use her as main DPS, which generally is not the recommended way to play her. For Artifact Man stats, look for Defense Sense, Joe or Defense Goblet, and Crit Circlet. 
As for substats, look for crit rate, crit damage, defense and attack, with defense being more valuable than attack. Now let's talk about her overall design and what is on Hoiver's mind when they designed her. Like I said, Shuri be made into a C-1 negative unit in Navia's team, could be because Navia's sales wasn't up to their expectation, so they tried to milk more out of the Navia mains, but yeah, it is what it is. The main reason why they set so many restrictions to Shuri in Team Com, where even at C6, she still needs to be paired with a dual character. It's probably because they want to make sure that she cannot be put in Nuvilet's team. Like mentioned, Shuri cannot be put into Nuvilet's team because either your Nuvilet will deal less damage due to lack of two reactions, or Shuri will lack the additional door. If they made Shuri to be viable in Nuvilet's team, without the need to be paired with a Geo Construct teammate, the damage the team could output is simply unimaginable, especially when the team has Farina, a team white buffer in it. So they have to restrict her kit and team comp to be tied with another Geo character. It's either this or lower scaling for her damage, and naturally they went with the first option, otherwise it's harder to sell her. Her damage is also scaled to both defense and attack, with defense being more significant. This had made her less reliant on Bennett, but most importantly, it caused her to lack the synergy to use in Abar Spinner that only gives defense bonus stat. They also made sure that her damage intervals to stagger with the passive of the weapon making it a worse weapon than the 3 star Harbinger of Dawn for Chiori. This may make people more willing to pull for her signature weapons too. Well, they really know what they are doing after all. They'll be doing everything to milk us. Anyway, this is her overall pool value for different players. Dedicated Ito main should go for C0, Navia main go for C1 or Dawn pool at all. C0 for people who want to use her with Zhongli as the universal plug in any other team. Other than that, she is an easy skip. In general, for now, she will be on the neutral tier for character pool value, and she will definitely be downgraded to a lower tier when she gets a rerun, because all she can do is damage, and damage is very easy to power creep, as per previous section. So if you really want her, you should get her now, but please don't spend the money that you don't have. Comment down below if you are gonna pull for her, and how you are gonna use her. I myself will probably not pull for her, I do not mind Ito and my Navia will need her C1 to work with her which I simply won't take the bet. To me, using her with Zhongli in every other team may be good and all, but the longevity of her value is not great. Not to mention she is somewhat reliant on her signature weapon to do good damage, and I simply don't have enough gems to do all that, provided that I want Alekino as well. Anyway, hopefully this video has helped you to understand Chori and her kid, and helping you to decide to pull for her or not. That is all for this video. If you like this video, please leave a like. I'm still very far from the 1k subscriber mark, so please do consider subscribe to the channel. And I will see you in the next one. Peace.